so this video is the multiple choice questions for Newton's gravitational law and also for Kepler's laws. Uh, so for the first question, if the distance between two point particles is doubled, then the gravitational force between them. Uh, and the answer is A, which is it will decrease by a factor of 4. And this is because initially the gravitational force is equal to G m1 m2 over r1 square, where G is the gravitational constant, okay? Um, and then the distance between the two particles is doubled. So R2 is uh, 2R1. So F2 is equal to G M1 M2 over R2 square, which is equal to 2R1. So here we get 4 uh, R1 square. Uh, and this here is F1. So the answer is F1 over 4. Uh, so for question 2, uh, at the surface of the Earth, an object of mass M has weight W. Uh, so if this object is transported to an altitude that's twice the radius of the Earth, then at the new location, uh, and the answer is E, uh, which is that the mass uh, is M, so it's the same, uh, but the weight is W over 9, okay? And this is because mass is an intrinsic property, so it does not change with location. And so this eliminates uh, A and C. Uh, so the weight of an object is equal to m times the gravitational acceleration, and it is equal to the gravitational force on the object, okay? Um, so it's equal to g m earth times m over r square. So at the surface of the earth, the weight uh, is equal to uh, this expression because r is equal to the radius of the earth but at a certain altitude h um, the distance from the center of the earth is equal to r e plus h so this is the new weight here right um, so the new distance is twice the radius of the earth so uh, the altitude so h is equal to 2 r e and this gives um, W2 is equal to G M E M over 9 R E square. And this uh, here is equal to W1 over 9. Okay, so the answer is E. So for question 3, a moon of mass M uh, orbits a planet of mass 100 M. So let the strength of the gravitational force exerted by the planet on the moon be denoted by F1 and let the strength of the gravitational force exerted by the moon on the planet be F2. Um, so which of the following is true? Uh, and the answer is C, which is F1 is equal to F2. Uh, and this is because from Newton's third law, the gravitational force that the moon exerts on the planet is equal in magnitude to the gravitational force that the planet exerts on the moon. Um, because these two forces are an action-reaction pair. And remember that action and reaction forces act on different objects. Uh, so for question 4, the planet Pluto has 1 over 500 the mass and 1, and 1 over 15 the radius of Earth. So what is the value of g in meter per second square on the surface of Pluto? Uh, so, the gravitational acceleration uh, on a planet uh, on a certain mass m is equal to the gravitational force over m, okay? So, it's equal to g m p, which is the mass of the planet, times m over m r square. So, it is equal to g m p over r square. Uh, so, we find the gravitational acceleration at the surface of Pluto. So we substitute for r the radius of Pluto, which is uh, r Earth over 15. And the mass is um, the mass of the Earth over 500. And this gives uh, 225 over 500 of this expression, um, which is the gravitational uh, acceleration at the surface of the Earth, which is 10 meter per second square. And so the answer is 225 over 50 meter per second square, which is D. Uh, so for question 5, a satellite is currently orbiting Earth in a circular orbit of radius r. Its kinetic energy is k1. So if the satellite is moved and enters a new circular orbit of radius 2r, what will be its kinetic energy?
so in this case, the gravitational force between the satellite and the Earth is what provides the centripetal force required for the satellite to go in circular uh, orbit. Uh, so, if we multiply both sides by half, we get this expression for the kinetic energy, which is gmm over 2r. So, this is uh, the initial kinetic energy of the satellite, and if the um, radius of its circular orbit is increased to 2r, then we substitute uh, for the final kinetic energy. Um, instead of r2, we put 2r1, and this gives k2 is equal to k1 over 2. So the answer is B. Uh, so for question 6, a moon of Jupiter has a nearly circular orbit of radius r and an orbit period of t. So which of the following expressions gives the mass of Jupiter? Uh, so just as question 5, the gravitational force is what uh, provides the centripetal force required for circular motion. Um, so from this we get g m over r is equal to b square, where m is the mass of Jupiter, okay? And the linear speed for circular motion is equal to the circumference over t, um, which is the period of motion, okay? The time it takes to complete one revolution. And so the, uh, this expression gives the mass of Jupiter, okay? So 4 pi square r cube over g, square which is e so for question 7 two large bodies uh, body a of mass m and b of mass 4m are separ separated by distance r at what distance from a along the line joining the bodies would the gravitational force on an object be equal to zero uh, and ignore the presence of any other body uh, so the mass of A is M, of B is 4M, and let the mass of the object be M, okay? Um, so let the distance between the object and A be X, and then uh, this gives the distance between the object and B to be R minus X, right? So for the gravitational force to be zero uh, on this object, um, this requires that the force on this object uh, by A is equal to the force by B. Um, so, we equate these two forces. Uh, so, as you can see, this gives r over x minus 1 equal to 2, right? Um, because here we have taken the square root of both sides. So, x is equal to r over 3, which is e. Uh, so, for question 8, the mean distance from Saturn to the Sun is 9 times greater than the mean distance from Earth to the Sun. So, how long is a Saturn near? Uh, so, from Kepler's third law, uh, the square of the period of revolution of any planet about the Sun is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of its orbit, which is A. And in case of a circular orbit, A is equal to the radius of the circle, okay? Uh, so let T1 be the length of an Earth a uh, year, okay? And A1 is the radius of the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. And let 2 be the length of a Saturn year, and A2 is the radius of the orbit of Saturn around the Sun, which is 9 times the radius of the Earth around the Sun, okay? Uh, so this gives uh, T2 is equal to 27T1, uh, which is uh, B. Uh, so, for question 9, the moon has mass m and radius r, and the small object is dropped from a distance of 3r from the moon's center. The object's impact speed when it strikes the surface of the moon is equal to... Uh, so, because only gravity is acting within the object moon system, and gravity is a conservative force, um, this means that the total energy of the system is conserved. And so we apply the conservation of energy, which is k initial plus u initial is equal to k final plus u final. Uh, so the object is dropped, so it means k initial is zero, and the initial potential energy is minus g m, which is the mass of the moon, uh, and m, m is the mass of the object over 3r, okay? And <clears throat> this is the impact speed, and this is the final potential energy, which is minus g m m over r. And this gives the uh, impact speed to be equal uh, to this uh, expression, 
and k here is equal to 4 over 3 so the answer is d uh, so thank you for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video